give you an idea, thermodynamically, the best engine is if you can take and take the atmospheric pressure, compress it to 10 times instead of 14.7, now it's 147 psi. Then if you take a compression ratio of 30 to 1 instead of 20 to 1, it's 4,410 psi. Tremendous pressures. Normal engine would just fall apart. But this doesn't because the pressures are only on a movable surface, these two pistons. Now, people say, oh, let me look at that. Gee, I've never seen an engine look like that. Do you have a prototype? Have you developed it? Well, make sure it's sure it'll work. Never thought about it being a problem when it was a simple little engine, push it up and down separately like this. But when you did it like this, now it becomes difficult, just because we haven't seen it. When we first built uh, aircraft engines and we went to radial engines, now the pistons were going opposite directions, you know, from a single crankshaft where the propeller was hooked to. Now the only thing about those type of engines, you have to have an odd number of cylinders. Because if you have an even number, you end up with two cylinders trying to work against each other. Each one has to work individually as it goes around, so you have to have an odd number. So a radial engine, odd number of cylinders. Uh, any other type of engine, what you have to have is you have to eliminate that head. Once we eliminated the head, then we realized that we still had another problem. What's that problem? Well, if you push down on a piston in a cylinder and it goes around the crankshaft, how do you keep, what makes that go around the crankshaft? There's a, there's a side, you push down here, as it goes around the crankshaft, it goes down the connecting rod, and yet the piston pushes up against the sidewall of the, of, the, of, the, of the engine. When it pushes against that way, it comes around and pushes the opposite way. And if you see an engine that wears out and starts burning oil, what happens is because it's pushing against the sidewalls, it becomes elliptical. So what do they do is they bore it out a little bit bigger, put bigger rings in it to fill up the gap that they have because it made it a little bit bigger. Now the engine works again. What we did is instead of wearing out the engine, we hooked two connecting rods to one piston. And when it pushed down around this crankshaft, had one in the opposite, the opposite crankshaft, so now it's going like this. And there's no, side, no pressures whatsoever on the, on the cylinder wall. It's all done on the crankshafts below. So all we've done now is we took a single engine, put two crankshafts on it. But unlike a normal engine, which has a crankshaft and many cylinders, we have one cylinder. Because we get so much force out of that one cylinder, you don't need to go to multiple cylinders. We can take a single cylinder one liter engine, a one liter engine, you know, a liter bottle is not very big. A one liter engine, that's the volume that's in the cylinder walls, can create 900 horsepower. Now, what do we normally get out of an engine? If we have five liter engine, we're getting somewhere around 300 horsepower. So we got five times the volume much smaller amount of horsepower and what we're doing is we're sending the fuel right through the exhaust pipe out into the atmosphere. In fact, to help burn some of the excess fuel we have on a gasoline engine they have a catalytic converter. So that burns some of the fuel in the exhaust pipe but that doesn't make the car go any further. It doesn't make it go any faster. It just tries to burn less fuel that goes to the atmosphere. Now a diesel engine, they haven't been able to design a catalytic converter for a diesel engine, but let's t let me tell you, if you can build an engine like we're talking about, the very best fuel you can get is diesel. It's safer, doesn't burn as much, doesn't need an ignition system. A diesel engine is a very simple engine. Just by its own pressure, it, the, the air heats up enough to ignite the fuel. Now, if you have a lightweight diesel, you might have heard of a glow plug or something like that. But on the big, heavy diesel engines, they don't have a glow plug. They just start them up, and the two pist a piston pushing against the head heats up the uh, temperature enough that it ignites the fuel. Now, so you understand that, if you have high pressure, the atmosphere gets hotter. 
So if the barometric pressure goes above 30, P, uh, 30 psi, uh, barometric pressure, yeast gets very hot. It starts going below 30, it starts getting cooler. Just the pressure of atmosphere changes the temperature that we live in. Same thing happens when you get the air. If you heat up the air, just by pressurizing it, you ignite the fuel. The ideal thing is then to keep the ratio of air to the ratio of fuel consistent so you have enough air or oxygen to burn all the fuel. Now a typical engine is designed to operate at maximum force, maximum horsepower. So at 30, uh, at uh, uh, efficiency of 30 percent, that's at maximum power. As you start reducing it, starts going towards part power or cruising speed, the efficiency goes from 30 percent down to 25, 22, 20, and you're going around 30 miles an hour, it's down to about 15 percent efficient. Uh, so the M1 tank, which they were trying to design an engine for, you never see a tank very often going at full speed. You see it moseying around the tank, very, uh, town very slow, people are walking by it. And that efficiency is about 11 percent. It's so inefficient that we're just burning fuel like mad and we're not going anywhere. So what we've done is we've designed an engine that has now uses all the fuel and what you do is you have to, because it ignites too quick, you compress the air and it gets hot. But it hasn't ignited anything yet because we didn't put any fuel in. We put fuel in at the last minute. It's fuel injection directly into the cylinder and at that last second when you put the fuel in, it ignites and you, you burn all the fuel and you get all the efficiency and all the energy that's in the fuel. As you are going lower speeds, we have less oxygen in there. The, the supercharger or the compressor we have is not mechanically hooked to the engine, it's electrically operated. So in order to keep the efficiency and keep the pollution down, if you, how do you make a car go faster? You put more fuel in. So we put more fuel in, but we got to put more air in to keep that ratio the same. So we put the air in just slightly. So if you step on the gas pedal, you actually accelerate the air a little before you accelerate the fuel. Then you put it there and we keep that same ratio. So at maximum horsepower, we not only got 50%, we got 80%. The maximum thermodynamic efficiency that you can achieve on any type of an engine because you're using some of the horsepower to just operate the components of an engine. Now that brings me back to another thing. Everybody went, and a great thing we did is we came along and we went from four valves per cylinder, to, I mean two valves per cylinder, to four valves per cylinder. Great thing. No, we've doubled the number of parts, and it takes more energy now to run that engine than it did the old muscle car engines. In fact, the muscle car engines of the 70s were more efficient than the engines we we're using today. Does that sound right? They're more efficient. The engine itself is more efficient. Your, your engines today are less efficient than they used to be. But the car is more efficient. How did the car become more efficient? We've made out of aluminum and plastic. The car is much lighter. It's less than half the weight of the old cars. Because if you had an old car, it was steel and heavy bumpers. You couldn't dent them. You couldn't bend them. You couldn't do anything with them.